what's going on guys? Ben Brewster here with TradeAthletics.com. I want to do a quick video on arm action patterning and a couple tools that you can use to improve your arm path is that, if that is something that you are specifically struggling with. So over the next couple of videos, we're going to touch on Indian clubs and a tennis racket feel or drill as well. Um, today we're not going to worry about the Indian club, but I want to touch on the tennis racket. So this might seem like kind of a far out there gimmicky type thing um, to put a tennis racket in a guy's hand if they're a baseball player. But hear me out and we're going to go through some of the reasons why I really like this drill for certain guys. Um, now, first off, most of us are familiar with tennis serve. Um, we have a different uh, visual or, or understanding of like what a tennis serve is supposed to look like. So sometimes when a guy is thrown a certain way his whole life, maybe he's hooking his arm, uh, maybe he has an, a very long arm path, maybe he's um, getting elevated uh, with his elbow at ball release or pushing the ball into ball release, maybe he's swinging his glove arm out or he's got a low glove arm um, and he's not doing anything to get that glove arm up, create any torque and deliver the throwing arm. Um, when a guy's been throwing a certain way his whole life and has certain uh, movement limitations, sometimes just getting out of that frame of reference and giving them a completely different way of looking at their arm path or their arm action and how it unfolds and how the glove arm and the throwing arm relate to each other can kind of break them of that habit, break them of that pattern, um, just mentally. It can, it can now become something different to their brain. So um, that's the first thing, is it's just a cue, uh, a cue that we'll try with certain guys who have just crazy inefficient path, uh, paths or patterns um, with how their throwing arm and their glove arm relate to each other. So what about a tennis serve do I like? Um, the first thing that I like is how uh, in a tennis serve you're trying to create the acceleration from behind your body. So if you're trying to contact the ball up here rather than out front, to contact the ball here with any sort of power, to do that you need to create the acceleration from behind your body from here to there. So from here to here, it doesn't give you any opportunity to cheat the elbow forward and try to create that acceleration out front of your body. You're creating the acceleration from behind your body and you're actively pulling yourself into that release point. So you're creating the power from behind your body um, and using the pec and pulling your arm into ball release, much like high velocity throwers do. So when you have an athlete who really, really struggles with this and maybe their elbow climbs and you see them pushing with the tricep into ball release, so rather than going into elbow extension and then internal rotation and letting that arm pull from behind the midline of the body, spiral out. Now you got elbow extension, now you have internal rotation. So they have a, a screwed up sequencing of how the arm unfolds and they're trying to create all, all of that acceleration out front of their body with the tricep. This can be one way of kind of visualizing a, a different way of accelerating their arm. You've got to accelerate from behind the body rather than in front of the body. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that when you look at tennis players or tennis serve, um, they're using the glove arm, they're elevating the glove arm to deliver the throwing arm. So you have to get the glove arm up in order to deliver the, the tennis racket or the throwing arm to hit a ball that's in this position. So just with that, con with that specific constraint, um, it forces you to get a little bit elevated on the glove side. And in doing so, you can use that to deliver the throwing arm. Some guys get very lazy with their glove arm when they throw or very rotational with their glove arm when they throw. So the other thing of, of this feel is that it gets you much more uh, online with the target. So it gets you much more like Ferris wheel. If you, if you think back to uh, Paul Nyman described the different rotational planes of the throwing delivery, you've got your Ferris wheel. This is like high three quarter guys, how they create rotation. You've got your merry-go-round. So this is the transverse plane. This is maybe like a Randy Johnson or, or a sidearm guy where they create their rotation uh, more in that plane. And then you've got the flatbed uh, or the, the truck where it's more the linear plane uh, of motion. So this really applies, and this, this drill or, or feel with the tennis racket applies more to guys who are kind of a three-quarter, high three-quarter arm slot. They're rotating somewhere in this plane. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily encourage using this tennis racket or tennis serve feel for a guy who's a little bit lower arm slot. So those are the two main things that I like about the tennis serve uh, cue is it gets that glove arm working, creating torque with the, with the glove arm. We have talked about internal rotation torque with the glove arm versus just kind of flailing it out. It gives you something a little bit elevated with that thumb down, creating an internal rotation torque. It gives you something to create some tension to unwind and deliver the arm. That's number one. And then the number two is that it forces you to accelerate from behind your body versus cheating the elbow forward and accelerating in front of your body. 
So how do we actually uh, coach this to a guy? How do we explain the drill to a guy? And which specific drills would you use this with? Well, first off, you don't necessarily need a tennis racket to use this as a cue for a guy. If you don't have a tennis racket, you can tell the guy, imagine that you're about to serve a tennis ball. It's hovering right here. And I want you to just step and throw to me as though you have a tennis racket in your hand and you have to hit the ball up there and serve it to your partner 60 feet away. Okay, the only difference is instead of starting with the hand up here, you gotta start with your hands together. If you just tell that to a guy and you give him that constraint and that new frame of thinking, a lot of times what you'll see is he'll just take a step, hands together, and it will instantly clean up his arm path. He might still have some mobility limitations and it might still not look perfect if there's some other stuff going on, but just telling him step and throw, hands together, imagine you gotta hit a ball above your head, a lot of times that path will start to clean itself up and you're gonna notice they're getting that glove arm elevated and they're accelerating from behind their body versus out front of their body. So just a step and throw with that tennis feel, even if you don't have a tennis racket, that's one way to see if this drill might work for a certain guy. If you're a coach and you have a staff of say 12 or 15 pitchers, I'd maybe play around with the high arm slot guys who have specifically bad or particularly bad arm paths this is something that I would just play with, to give them the cue, and see does that clean up the arm path? Are they spraying the ball over the place? Does it screw them up, or does it seem to immediately clean up their arm path? And if it does, then these are the guys that I would start to hone in on the next two drills with, and consider actually using this as some of their pre-throwing kind of feel or patterning work. So, the next two drills that I would consider implementing with guys who it seems like it might be helping, or it seems like it cleans up their initial patterns, the first is a rhythm rocker. So basically it's a, it's a rocker drill, but the purpose of this isn't max effort. It's not max intensity. It's trying to feel the relationship between the lower half, the weight shift, the back hip, and how the arm action unfolds. So with the rhythm rocker, you're still gonna tell them to envision, you can actually give them a tennis racket if you have one, still gonna tell them to envision, like let's say I'm throwing this way to the target. They're trying to hit a tennis ball up here, right in line with their release point. They're trying to hit a tennis ball overhead. Um, and then I like to add in basically a figure eight to this particular pattern. You don't have to, but it would look something like this. You add a little bit of a figure eight motion. You have them rock back, hands together. And then from here, they're trying to just hit that ball and direct it towards the target. So like this. So again, smooth, I'm integrating that with my lower half, I'm integrating that move with the hip rotation, delivering the arm and hitting that ball from behind the body, accelerating it and pulling from behind my body versus out front. So that's the rhythm rocker drill with a, just a kind of a figure eight pattern, trying to capture these loops of energy and trying to smooth everything over with the hip rotation and with your arm swing. So again, uh, when guys are doing this, don't just have them like looking up at a spot. There should still be a direction to the throw. They should still be visualizing that they're throwing in a certain, at a certain spot in a certain direction. So as I'm going through this, I'm still in my head. I know I have to get back downhill towards the camera right here. It's not just trying to hit the target. But that target is just kind of a visual for them to keep in the back of their mind as they're trying to direct it uh, straight ahead in this case. So one more time, hands together, and I'm just trying to unwind with this constraint and hit that tennis ball up here. Okay, so that's the rhythm rocker. Uh, that's probably gonna feel initially awkward for a lot of guys, but it's gonna click where they can feel that arm swing and the hips start to sequence in together. And then from there, just have them play around with their normal delivery, maybe a walking wind up, a step into, or maybe a step back, but some version of their regular delivery and see if they can integrate that same feeling if it seems to be helping them. So. For me, I might just play around out of my normal delivery. And again, trying to get the glove arm a little bit higher and get back downhill, hit that tennis ball right up in this area right here. So you can play around with that. You can play around with step back versions of your delivery. You can play around with step into versions of your delivery. Um, but that's really it. It's giving guys a different feel, a different look, a different frame of reference to view, through which to view their arm action and their arm path. And then I've talked about this before in another video. 
The other way that you can imagine uh, the arm path is kind of like a figure eight or an infinity symbol, uh, like a horizontal eight. Basically the glove arm maps the first part of that figure eight and the throwing arm maps uh, the, the posterior part of that, of that figure eight. So if this is the eight right here, the throwing arm maps the top part, or the throwing arm maps the bottom part, the glove arm maps the top part, you're creating some tension, you're creating some dissociation, throwing arm is loose, and then from here, you're basically closing that figure eight. So the first part of the figure eight, close the figure eight. First part of the figure eight, get back down, glove arm delivers the throwing arm, close the figure eight. Open the figure eight, close the figure eight. So that's, again, a way to feel the throwing arm and the glove arm dissociating from each other, but still in your mind, you can understand how those two ultimately come back and connect together into the, the overall loop of energy um, and that they are connected, the throwing arm and the glove arm. They're not just two completely uh, dissociated entities in the throwing motion. So kind of visualizing it as a figure eight or infinity, it can help the overall energy transfer by envisioning it as kind of a loop of energy and how you need to be able to capture that loop and seamlessly integrate that into ball release. So um, that's the tennis racket cue or tennis racket drill. I would first just play around with it as a cue and then I would experiment with incorporating into like a rocker drill or step into or some version of their delivery. And again, if you have a tennis racket, I think that only adds to uh, the usefulness of the drill. You can have that auditory feedback of, feel, of hearing that uh, kind of whip in the air um, as you get into release. Uh, I would be careful if you're using the actual tennis racket itself, just make sure guys aren't like over supinating into release or like chopping, um, chopping into ball release, that you are trying to be uh, extended at the elbow and a neutral wrist um, in line with that, in, with that release. Don't have guys like bent elbow chopping into ball release. So just be aware of that uh, because it is, uh, it is more like a handle than an actual ball position. So just make sure that guy's wrist is neutral and in line with their release point if you are gonna do it with the tennis racket itself. Uh, but again, thanks for watching guys. Just another way of looking at the arm action, another tool in the toolbox. Um, I think if you're a high school, college uh, coach who maybe has 12 or 15 guys, this probably would apply to three or four or five guys on the team. It's not something that you just have to have everybody do, but it's something I would play with, I would experiment with, and I would see how you guys like it. So uh, thanks for watching. Again, make sure to subscribe if you guys aren't already subscribed. Follow us on social media, uh, Twitter at Tread Athletics, Instagram, Tread underscore Athletics. I'll see you guys next time.